Hello guys, it's Jaguar here. Today I'm bringing you an OBS tutorial. Here you see of OBS full screen. Today we're going to be going over the basics of OBS and how to stream to Twitch with it. So let's go into settings to start off. General, you can just do either your language or setting a profile. Next we'll move on to encoding as general is not very important in this program. So, encoding we have our maximum bitrate, which you can adjust depending on what you are planning to use. So, once we have this down, we can kind of move on to our next thing, which will be our encoder. So, we choose X264 as this is the best one to use. Next, we move on to using CBR, which I always choose to select. Enable CBR padding. It's just something I had recommended to me, so I use. And if you turn CBR off, you can change the quality here to 8. And you'll notice that this is actually a new profile I'm on, so this is a bit different. Here, I like to play around and go with my 3000, obviously, like I normally do. My bitrate, jack that up again. Format, always remember, 41.1 hertz is what everything should be in. Now, we can click apply. Broadcast settings, file output or live stream, depending on what you're planning to do. So, click here, and we can browse through. Save, yes, I didn't change anything. So custom, video adapter, this will be for your resolution. So if I wish to do um, 720p, I would do, uh, sorry, 1280, and I can just do none. I recommend if you're planning to do um, whatever size that you just automatically go with what that is in your base resolution. And don't downscale as there is no need for that. Here you can change your frames. Disable arrow. Um, disable arrow is... My apologies. Disabling arrow is strongly recommended if using screen capture. Or monitor capture. It's not really that big a deal. Just disable it. Here you can set up your audio stuff. This is what is just going to be your default. Many you're going to want to use default as it should be set to your speakers. Mine is currently not. Then you select your microphone in which you choose and you can go on. Yes, save. Here you can go. I like to remove the buffering time of default at 700 and drop it down to 500. The pr reset for this should be very fast if I am correct or super fast, one of the two. And the encoder will be high. For Twitch, you do have to change this to main. And this you can change depending on your CPU. It really warns you not to. Due to the fact that it's just a bad idea. To change without really knowing what you're doing. Or being able to do it. So, now we have that. You can set your keyframe interval. Which I just changed back to 2 now. And you can go down. Audio, just leave that alone. There is no need to touch that. So, we are done now. Here, we will go add a new scene by right clicking, clicking add new scene, and we'll just do tutorial, and we shall go with that. So, sources. We can go here, add, window capture will capture um, an entire program, and something nice about it is if, here, this is my XSplit, you can do inner window or entire window depending on what you choose to do. So that's really nice. You can also do it with any other program. And you can even do a sub region of what you'd like to. Currently that is where my exploit is sitting. But I could adjust it down and then bring that in and bring that up. And I click back outside when complete. It's just really for what you want to do. Next, we have monitor capture. Obviously, it's going to capture your entire monitor image, which just brings in a file image, browse, and all that's doing, as I said, is bringing in a file. So, image slides show kind of the same thing. Global source, I will get to in a minute. Text, it, it's text. 
video capture device is kind of just anything that's connected to your computer that can record and as you see it even can include XSplit which is a broadcaster. You can use the device audio disable or switch it to any other audio. Custom resolution, I don't really see a reason to this as you can just automatically set it up in your device selection. And we'll just leave that once again. Game capture, once again, pretty obvious, it'll capture your game. Global sources. So what you can do is, it's just pretty much to add um, whatever you want. So say I wanted webcam, I would choose type in webcam. I come down here, I'll choose the live in cam person. And it just defaults to what the settings are. You can actually go configure it, advanced settings, and all that, which come on the device automatically. There's just really a way for this is so that way when you see here and I go over global source, it's something I can quickly add. The settings are already there and I don't have to play with it. It's for when you already have what you're planning on. So if you want to edit things, we can go video capture and one moment, click that there and say I wanted to do an image, browse images. We can go through here, go through our Twitch, and I'll just use the Twitch overlay I have. So, in order to actually edit, you're wondering what may be different between OBS and XSplit. So, in order to do anything editing your scene in OBS, which is one downside to OBS I do find, is you have to go preview stream. And it says this device is currently in use by another application. You can see if I just click here, on this and click edit scene here so you have to what scene you want what source you want and um, editing scene while previewing you can resize you can even go past but it will snap to the very edges you just saw then I'll have to click this one and bring it out and it snaps you click off you click off editing scene and then you can stop your preview and it will go away well, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Um, also, if you believe that OBS is not the software for you, I advise you to check out my XSplit tutorial, which will be linked down below. And I'll also link it on screen right about here.